He shared about how God delivered him from a life of worry and has given peace that surpasses all understanding. So, you know, those are really, those, those are incredible words to hear from, you know, absence like that. Welcome back to the What's the Dill podcast, the place where we answer the most viral questions about Catholic life. This is episode 117. And I'm your host, Pete Dill. We have a great show for you today. We're going to talk about the Ohio State football team and what they were doing on their campus this week. But first, as you can see, a little life update in a different place. This is a different location. Um, took the whole podcast team down to San Antonio. Big life news. We moved down to San Antonio. Um, yeah, God blessed us with a house, uh, the opportunity to get one here. Uh, so we're really excited. So it's a big life change for us. We've had a lot going on. That's why this episode has been uploaded, uh, uploaded late, um, later than usual. I like to get it up early Thursday morning. But yeah, you can see a little bit of the house right here, a little bit of the background. Got a couch right there, a new couch, which is great. Um, but yeah, it's a big life change, big decision, big discernment. Um, we could talk about it in another episode. If you have a question about it, uh, write me, DM me. We can uh, answer that here. Uh, so thank you all for all your prayers. Those, those of you who have been reaching out, praying for us. Still got a lot of boxes open. Still got a lot of things to move around. It was, yeah, it was a, there was a lot to lift everything. My gosh, I feel like my arms are just on fire still, but, uh, it, everything went well. Thank you, God. So it was a great big adult thing that we did this past week. Um, so keep, keep us in your prayers as we're still trying to figure everything out, but it's going great so far. Okay. We're going to jump into some of these questions. The first question is about an awesome story. I saw maybe a lot of you saw too about the Ohio state football team. Question is, I just saw the Ohio State football players preaching their faith and sharing the gospel on the campus this week. How can I have as much courage to share my faith like they do? So I don't know who saw this story, but a bunch of the Ohio State football players like Trevion Henderson, like this is an all big dumb player, um, went on campus and kind of had like a mini prayer meeting, prayer service that kind of turned into like a thousand people being there and people like getting baptized and um, just having like a praise and worship session. Um, I know it got a lot of news coverage because, you know, you have these really popular athletic dudes, the kind of kings of the campus sharing the gospel. And there's a lot of video footage, which you should go check out of these guys just being real, open and honest about, um, about their faith. I have a couple quotes here that I think were really powerful. Travion Henderson, like I said, he said, he told the audience, Jesus changed my life, set me free from sin, made me holy, made me righteous. I'm only righteous because of what the Lord has done for me. It wasn't anything I did. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. And he wants to do the same for you. Um, then, uh, Mecca, Becca said, he, he shared about how God delivered him from a life of worry and has given peace that surpasses all understanding. So, you know, those are really, those, those are incredible words to hear from, you know, athletes like that. You know, in this country, we love, we love sports. We love football and we love our athletes and we love our athletes to, um, you know, do things we feel like we can't do, you know, when we play basketball or play football and then we see people do it so much better, we're just like, wow, I wish I could do that. I'm going to follow everything in your life now about your athletic journey because I wish I could do what you do. You know, like we see these guys and gals who are so good at their sport that we also play that we're just like taken by. I know I'm taken by. I am a huge sports fan. Love these guys. I'm, I'm in my mid thirties now and I'm still following you guys who are 19. Like, oh, come on. Dude, come on! Um, but, you know, we love sports. Now, we love sports because they do things we can do. But then it's extra powerful when we see these guys, like these Ohio State football players, do things we can do. Like share the gospel. Preach about Jesus. We can do that. Really popular athletes aren't spreading the gospel every single day like this. Now, there are, you know, credit to all the Christian athletes out there who, who do share the faith and talk about Jesus. But 
It's not every day that a, a prayer, crazy worship service breaks out on a huge college campus led by college athletes. So it's, it is really courageous of them. Um, you know, they got class, they got practice, they got a lot of expectations. You know, I remember, like, I played, you know, basketball, Division One basketball, and, um, you know, huge and big time in the college basketball world, and Ohio State football is, you know, another level up in terms of just athletics, expectations, you know, resources. And I can tell you from experience that a Division One program is not just like, Hey man, do whatever you want to do. Like, go, go, go do your thing. Don't worry. We'll have practice in a couple days. Like the days are regimented. The schedules are regimented. Everyone has their hand and eye and everything. The coaches know what players are doing. People know what players are doing. There's so many requests that you have to do as a player. Like get your picture taken for this. There's a, a, a donor thing for this. There's a off meet, you know, off meeting thing for this on top of the training and the working out and the classes and the practice for these guys to take time out of their incredibly busy schedules and to, you know, put on the armor of God and have the courage to share the faith. It's really impressive. It's really incredible. So it was really cool to see these guys just sharing the gospel and, you know, have such a, uh, um, a classic great message, you know, like God freed me from sin. What I do is because of him. It's like, yeah, that's, I love that. I love to hear it from guys like that. So how can we have the courage? I got to answer this question. How can we have the courage? Well, we don't always need to have really, really big public displays like that. You know, we don't need to now tomorrow set up a prayer meeting to be like, all right, we got to start getting some people up here. Let's start calling out people from the street. But what we can do, I think, is tune our ears to recognize God's voice when he wants us to share something about the faith. Tune our ears to when God wants us to share the gospel. Because, you know, when you're, every single moment is an opportunity to be a witness, but every single moment isn't an opportunity to, you know, directly tell someone about the gospel. Um, yeah, like there's going to be moments, a time, a place where God wants us to share the gospel. And we have to be able to recognize that. So we have to tune our ears to when God wants us to share the gospel. And I think a good I think a good indicator for when a moment like that comes is when you're talking about life, your life, and someone asks you a question, why? And your response is, well, because... You know, Jesus has blessed me with these things in my life. And because God has, you know, freed me from my old ways and brought me into a new life. When that's your natural response, when you feel like, oh, well, maybe now it's not the right time. Maybe a different time I can tell them. You know, so that's the natural response. And then the, you know, the, the negative talk says, well, maybe they don't want to know this. Or maybe they don't need to hear. So maybe another time. If you feel like sharing the gospel and a, re a reaction in your head is saying, well, maybe a different time I can tell them. Share it. Do it. That is the time. You know, there's a difference between call. You know, so, you know, rolling down your window on the highway and saying, "Hey, come here. Do you know Jesus and accept Him in your heart?" The guy's like, "What? Do you know Jesus and accept Him in your heart?" I can't hear you. You said you are Jesus. No, I said, "Do you know Jesus?" You know, like rolling down your window on the highway is not the right time. But having a conversation with someone in your life and they ask you about your life that's a time to share the gospel and maybe again your mind is saying well maybe another time i'll do it that's the perfect time to do it then because the perfect time is now so we have to recognize when god is opening an opportunity for us to share the gospel and you know it's never perfect no one's ever perfect there's been times where i feel like i've shared the faith or it wasn't the right time or definitely times where i have not shared my faith when I probably should have. So pray for courage, pray for um, the wisdom to hear God's voice, pray for um, the dis gift of discernment to know when, pray for the gift of discernment to know, to have God put you in the right place at the right time and to be able to recognize it to share the gospel. So this was a really cool story. I'd love seeing these Ohio State football players do it. Uh, and again, I would encourage you Go check out some videos, I think Instagram or, you know, they have somewhere on the internet 
there's some great videos of these guys talking about their faith at this uh, praise and worship session. Next question. I've gone through a lot of hardships in my life and I've always overcame them by pulling myself up by my bootstraps. But this year, this past year has been different. I've never found the right spouse. I don't have many, many friends and I've really started to drink a lot. When I'm not working, I just spend my time sitting on the couch, watching TV or scrolling. I don't have any motivation. I just feel defeated. How can I get back to the old me? So this is a good question. Um, you know, I, I, I saw this question. I related to it because um, it's not like directly about being Catholic. It's not like, oh, like, sure, just like pray more. You know, I think, again, like growing up through the faith or if you're new to the faith, you know, sometimes the reaction can always be like, pray more. Just, you know, pray more. Hey, you, are you depressed? Just pray more, you know? And so what I, why I wanted to choose this because we need to have really good conversations about like our mental health, our physical health, and our spiritual health. Because what I hear from this person, you know, and I'm not an expert. So if you're listen, if you wrote this question and you're watching this, I'm not an expert. But, you know, it sounds like you have a little bit of depression. Sounds like you're suffering some, you know, deep mental health episodes. You're having some depression, lacking motivation. You know, you need a little purpose in your life. That's okay. A lot of us have depression. A lot of us, you know, working on our mental health. But why I think this is important to talk about and why being a Catholic, why I think this is appropriate for Catholic life is, you know, our mental health our spiritual health and our physical health are all imbued by God to work together. So if you're praying all the time, but you're have you know, a ton of pain and you're, um, you know, you can't fall asleep at night and you're waking up angry because you have so much pain. Well, God wants you to address the physical health in your life. If you, you know, are in great shape and you go to mass every week, but you're just like crying yourself to sleep every night because you have wounds and you're you're depressed you're anxious well god wants you to address your mental health as well and they all kind of work together you know our physical health can help take up our mental health and our mental health when we're feeling good can help take up our spiritual health you know it's easier to pray when your mind is it overloaded with anxiety and fear and overthinking you know it's easier to go for a run and get a workout in when you're feeling good about your faith and your relationships and you're feeling good about your, you know, uh, your mental health, state of your mental health. So how do you get back to the old me? You know, we got to then look at these mental health, physical health, spiritual health pillars. And if your mental health is feeling bad, try some physical health, try some activity, go for a walk, go for a run, join a gym, rock climb, find any physical thing that you like to do and just start doing it. You might think, oh, I don't like physical things. I'm not athletic. I guarantee you there's something out there that you like that's physical. Canoeing, rock climbing, hiking, tennis, pickleball, basketball, going for a walk, going in a sauna. I, don't, I guarantee you there's something that you're like, oh, I love canoeing. I'm just gonna, you know, I, my buddy is a canoe. I'm going to go on a canoe trip this weekend. I'm not a big canoe guy, so I don't know what the canoe community does on its weekends. But find a physical activity. The physical activity in our lives can help raise our mental health. It can help get rid of a little bit of mind fog. It can help ease our mind of some of our spiritual pains. You know, it can just like give us, give us a clear mind. So I think sometimes it's easy to just get really, really, really hard on ourselves and feel like, oh my gosh, like I can't get anywhere. My mental health, my mental health's in the twos. My spiritual health's in the, in the dumps. I haven't prayed in forever. I feel like I'm just like covered in sin. I don't know what to do. Okay. We're going to try to address this by our other healths. Um, so I think for something like this, physical activity is a great way to kind of bump up spiritual health and bump up mental health. Um, so I'd encourage you who, who wrote this, to, yeah, go for a walk tonight. You just even a walk. I, that's what I, you know, the 10,000 steps, you know, that's like, kind of like what a new standard. 10,000 steps is like a new standard for health, but it can seem maybe like silly, but a nice, long, brisk walk, that can actually do wonders. I love a good walk. So don't get it twisted. You don't need to be doing clings and deadlifts and back squats just to work out. Go for a nice couple mile walk. That'll do wonders for your mind. So 
try to get out and go for a walk tonight and find an activity that you like to do and do it consistently, I guarantee you that can help start to kickstart some things in your life to get better spiritually and better mentally. Okay, next question. I'm 21, and since I was a kid, I dreamed of becoming a professional soccer player. But obviously, this is not going to happen to me realistically. So how do I accept this and move on? It's holding me back to progress in my career. It makes me feel like I'm lost, and it makes me feel like my current life is not enough. How do I get over how do I get over letting go of the dreams of my past? I I, I love this question. Um, I love this question because I feel like, you know, having big dreams when you're young, you know, you're like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to play in the NFL and the NBA. Uh, also might become a senator, uh, the cowboy. I'll probably do that in the summers. Um, what else do I want to do? Firefighter. Just volunteer. I was a volunteer firefighter as well. Um, you know, live in a big mansion have a few big mansions all across the world, probably got to go London, you know, New York, Shanghai, that's kind of popping off, so I got to make sure I have a place to reside in Shanghai. You know, when you're young, it's easy to have big dreams, and it's wonderful. Having big dreams is incredible. But what do we do when these dreams, <laughs> when these dreams kind of don't come true? Something I think, um, something I think I try to do is like look into the deeper hearts of my dreams or my ambitions. I try to like dive deep into the what and the why of like my ambitions. So for example, you want to be a professional soccer player. Well, maybe something that you really like about soccer is like the brotherhood or community or the locker room aspect of being a soccer player. So you could always do coaching and have that, you know, have that element have that community for you know fraternity uh aspect of being a soccer player you know you don't have to let that go or maybe it's that you love um you know the x's and o's of the game so maybe you can become an analyst or maybe you can become a you know teacher a soccer coach you know that's like a like run an academy um maybe you really really enjoy just being outside and being physical and having something to do physical, you know, well, again, like pick, pick up a hobby, join a soccer league, a club league. I'm sure there's ones around. So digging into the why behind some of our dreams, what we really, really like about them and trying to find the parts that we can still do even as adults when our dreams of becoming professional athletes have died can be really, really helpful. Um, you know, don't let go of your dreams. Just because you can't become a professional athlete today doesn't mean you can't love the game and study the game and be a part of the game. You know what I mean? Like, every single one of the NBA coaches all played the game at some point. They're not playing it anymore, but they're doing a different part of the game. So there's a lot of opportunities to be around athletics other than being a player. And that can actually be very satisfying too. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm in my mid thirties, so my day, my days are done. The jerseys hung up, the shoes are put away. But you know, I love watching sports. I love watching basketball. I love watching football. Um, you know, I I love kind of supporting it in that way. You know, maybe I'll coach my kids' team. I don't know, but you don't have to leave the game forever just because you don't play it anymore professionally. Um, and then playing, uh, you know. Being competitive and playing in adult leagues, club teams around your city, wherever you're at, is also a great way to um, exercise that muscle. It might seem like, oh, whatever, like this is not even cool. Like I want to be playing, you know, in the NBA or the you know, English Premier League. What, you know, what good is a men's league? Well, honestly, there's a lot of great men's leagues out there and just being competitive is fun. It's actually really, really great just to be competitive and get in the men's league and just get a sweat on and compete against some other dudes and just like that is a that scratches the itch it might not seem like it but i promise you being in a, a men's league is a great way to stay connected to the game and stay connected to being competitive um yeah so don't feel like your dreams are dead if you love the games you love you know sports you can still be around you can still play you would still a part of you even if the idea of being a professional has kind of sunsetted you know, for a gentle term. Um, 
yeah, I, I mean, we all have those days where it's like, wow, I'm never going to make the league, am I? I guess I'm never going to become a uh, tight end of the NFL. They don't need a 30, 34 year old dude. All right. All right. Well, all right. I can, I can, I can hang up those dreams. Um, but always still good to dream. So yeah, don't, don't lose hope in this. Like, Oh, I, I, I just like, you know, sports is now nothing to me because I can't, I can't be professional at it. So great question. Okay. So that's going to be it for me today here in the new, the new what's the Del studio. Um, thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you share, like subscribe to this podcast. Um, as always reach out with any questions, DM, email, text, whatever, get in touch with me. Let's keep the conversation going. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Of any of these questions, I want to hear what you think um, about living this life and living this Catholic life. So reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Hope you guys all have a good week. Talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.